our first ever mulberries from our tree. We're gonna try it and see what it tastes like. Okay, ready? Oh, they're good. Tart. They're really good. My. You think it's tart? I think it's sweet. And tart. And tart. What do you think it tastes like? You know, kind of like a like a sour blackberry or yeah. A raspberry. Maybe. Yeah. Mixture between a uh, blackberry and a raspberry and yeah. a cherry. Right. I so think good. They're really good. Well, we could hear some clucking. And uh, as we tracked it down into the middle of the parsley, we found Bird trying to lay her egg in here. Hi, Bird. Hi, Bird. Our pumpkin plant is growing out of control. Just kidding. But it is growing a lot. And there are pumpkins hidden everywhere in there. A lot of them. There's one down in there. One down here. A little baby one down here. And I didn't even know I planted this. I think I just planted it from seeds of a white uh, pumpkin that I got last year for Halloween. I'm not sure. But it's really taken off. The thing that's doing really well is the spaghetti squash. So there's a lot of them hidden in here. And I just noticed that I got two tomatoes starting to come. I just let them grow wild. I don't. I don't vine them up or do anything, and I find that that is just fine to do it that way, and you still get a ton of them. Hi, Mama. There's a spaghetti squash. There's some. There's one. A big one. And there's one down here. Another big one down here. Dang. One big, big one back there. My zucchini plants. I guess only I only planted two. I'm realizing that it's a good idea to have at least two plants close to each other so that when, if some of them have more males than females, the other plant will usually have what it needs so that it can pollinate together. Look at this big old one. There's another one back here. And another one over here. And another one growing right here. Let's look at this squash because it was going wild and I have eaten a lot of squash out of here already. Let's see what's happening. Oh, I see another one coming. Well, it's so crazy. It just goes, goes, goes. Pretty awesome. If you're new to gardening, squash is the easiest thing to grow, and it's so prolific that you will be eating squash for days. So we have zucchini that falls into the squash family, spaghetti squash, which you see here, um, that I'm holding and you know that it's ready when it's yellow like that and then crook necked squash which is like the yellow looking one it kind of is bumpy and then a yellow straight squash which is kind of um, smooth on the outside and that's mostly what you see at the grocery stores here in Arizona all right this is an example of why I let my tomato uh, plants just fall over on top of themselves I don't stake them up because we uh, went on vacation just for a couple days and I knew these were going to turn while we were gone and I wondered if the birds would see them but they don't because they're so hidden underneath here. Look at that, they're pristine. So I'm going to pick those for today. Cool. So I got lots of them in here. They're just all kind of hidden and starting to turn but they're totally hidden. So that is why I let them grow wild. They just hide from predators, so I can eat them. 
Last thing I want to show you is look at our watermelon patch and cantaloupes. So this is a pretty big one. And there's the cantaloupes. I think they might be about ready. And then we have more watermelon over here and more watermelon on the side of the house. But four big ones. They, wow, this one's big. So one, two, three, oh, four, five. Oh my gosh, there's another one. Six. Wow. That one's a funny shaped. Something's kind of eating at that one. But those are fun. So we planted those for the animals. They're probably going to be ready soon. Hi. I got these bamboo plants from Seamus O'Leary just before winter last year. I mean this last year, you know, in 2018. And they're doing okay. I thought they were gonna die, so I'm pretty happy they're coming back. And we got this cottonwood last year. It was on its deathbed at Moon Valley Nursery. I think we paid $99 for it. It was just a twig. That was less than a year ago. And uh, it's like tripled almost in size. So I'm pretty happy about that. Mm -hmm. My banana tree. I see that I'm gonna have to put more stuff around it because chickens are eating one of the new pups that are coming out. They were eating that one. I had to do something to keep that from happening. There's another one. And I don't know what happened, but the bananas just didn't, didn't, it just didn't get pollinated. It's picking day. That was easier than the other one, though. Oh, really? And Herschel's in there eating up their grain. Will you go get them? <laughs> yep. All right, it's a big watermelon. So we were wondering how you tell when it's ripe. Well, uh, we're thinking one of the key ways is when um, when the vines die back. That's a really good way to tell. Another guy, a watermelon farmer, said that you go to the vine and see where it's attached, and then you find the curly cue. This one's ready to go. Yeah, I think they're all ready. If the curly cue is dead, this is the curly cue. I think you can pull that one. Then up. that means it's ready. They say knocking and hollow, and if it's yellow on the bottom and blah, 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 blah. But really, I think it has, oh, and it pulls away easily from the vine. Hopefully I caught that. Okay, let's take this in. Then, that means they're ready. Oh, good. I hope we get one there. Because this one hasn't produced yet, so that's good. We're trying to do sequential planting or whatever you call that. What do you call that kind of planting or gardening? Like where it just grows next after next after next. Like, I forget what it's called. I'll have to look that up, but um, that's what we're gonna do. So we're in our bathroom and we're gonna weigh this watermelon. Do you even know what you weigh without the watermelon? What does it say? Uh, oh, what does it say? 214. Okay. <laughs> Cooper wonders what the heck we're doing. 191. The 23 pound watermelon. Whoa! Sweet! Whoa! Did you see that? That's a good one. Better. I think that this is just how these ones are. Want to taste it, Andrew? It's sweet. Is it? Yeah, it's good. Can you cut me a slice? Mm -hmm. Try it too. Here's our last three big watermelon from the in-ground garden. We have a bunch of smaller watermelon on the other side of the house that are that were in our above, like you know, our raised beds. Those ones didn't do so well. Number one, I planted there was five plants in there, even though they were spaced out over the course of six feet. Um, that would that's just wrong. That's not enough room. So you need literally six feet between watermelon to watermelon.
Wow, look at all those seeds. Yep. This is what I used. Georgia Rattlesnake Watermelon by Ferry Morris. Does it look like the picture? See how there's like, I guess they call it rattlesnake because there's hmm. like snake-like veins going through it. What's the picture? Yeah, yeah, and uh, it, yeah, they're not as red as the ones that we get at the store. They're, they're pink. They're, there's a lot of water in them. A lot of water. And they're sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Good luck catching it. Here, Look it. <laughs> Aww. Meanwhile, Mama's up there. Oh, there's Dad too. Uh -oh. Buddy, your baby. <laughs> come on, come on, Betty. Oh, <laughs> so cute. Look at it. <laughs> Family. It is. It is a family. I know. It feels like we're in California. Our neighbors so generously said that we could pick as many peaches as we wanted and uh, apricots and apples. So we're going to make them a cobbler. But look, there's just hundreds of them. And so we'll make them a cobbler. We'll give some to our animals. It'll be great. Thank you. <laughs> Say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and so it broke so heavy. It broke all of these branches. So crazy. I mean, this is just awesome. I mean, not awesome that it broke it, but amazing how beautiful these are. I love it. And then there's apricots in here. This way, this is the apricot tree. Look at all of them. So we'll pick up all these from the animals. Tons. So great. Yeah? On our way out. Our neighbor texted us tonight and said that we could come over and pick some of the fruit because they had so much that um, literally they just couldn't eat it all. So we were welcome to have some. So here's what we got tonight. We're going to make some cobblers and some cookies and whatever else we can probably make so good Wayne is making some these are going to be frozen some frozen apple sauce apple baby things I don't know what this is it's just apples he boiled then he grinded it up and it's just apples right no yep, no what? from our neighbor's tree and I'm gonna freeze it and then on hot days, I'll put it outside for the chickens and they can eat as, as a thaws. Yeah, because they were eating frozen yogurt that we had. Bet. They love frozen yogurt. And frozen peaches. The neighbor has so many, she can't eat them all. And so we feel like it's a waste to let it just fall on the ground. The chickens love the and fruit. And the chickens love the fruit. And, and they it's, would eat the fruit all day. It's free. So we're just doing that. It's going to be great. Yes. It's going to be tremendous. Okay, I'm going to cut up this cantaloupe that we just grew from our garden. Let's see if it's bright. Is this the way you cut it, Wayne? I don't really know. Well, I just cut it down the middle, I think you're fine. It doesn't look very right, does it? It's... Yeah, it is. Oh, it is, Wayne. It is. It's like green to me. <gasps> it's it's right. perfect! Oh, uh, I just don't know how to cut look it. Look at it, it is perfect. Can you see that? Ooh! Can you oh, see that in the that screen? That means we gotta go get this other tip. Okay, and save these seeds. Cool, all organic cantaloupe. I don't like cantaloupe, but I'm even gonna try to eat it. Just another way that we keep our animals cool here on the farm in the summer. Arizona heat can get up to 115, so you've gotta be careful.